We are going to start a new course, which I will be introducing today, Living by the Spirit. And the topic today is Life-Giving Spirit. Living by the Spirit, the topic is Life-Giving Spirit. It is impossible to be a true believer. It is absolutely impossible to become a true believer, a child of God, a disciple of Jesus Christ, and remain so without submission to the work of God the Holy Spirit. I take that again slowly. It is impossible to become a true believer, a child of God, a disciple of Jesus, and remain so without submission to the work of God, the Holy Spirit. No wonder the work of the Holy Spirit has come under attack by the enemy, misleading and confusing people. Like I said, all you know about Christ is impossible to believe and become without submission to the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit has come under attack by the enemy, misleading people and confusing people. Some come and give prophecies that God did not ask them to give. And it's not from God. You know about that. It's actually started from the Old Testament. What do I say? It actually started from Adam. But let me just give you an example of what happened in a situation in 2 Kings 5. A man known as Gehazi, he was on the brink of greatness. His master, Elisha, had received double portion of a great anointing. Elijah's anointing was awesome. And Elisha asked for a double portion. And he got a double portion. And then there was Gehazi, who now became a servant, like an assistant, learning on the job. A time came when there was a leper that was healed by his master. Elisha. And then the leper came to say thank you. It's always good to say thank you. He brought things to say thank you. Elisha said, as long as as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take anything from you. As long as the Lord whom I serve lives, I will not take anything from you. Go in peace. So, The leper, a former leper known as Naaman, Naaman was going. And then Gehazi said, oh, my master let him off too lightly. And then he used those words, as long as God lives, I will go after this man. He went after the the person that had just been healed. And he said, oh, my master said I should come to you and ask that two people have just come. The first lie said his master sent him. First lie. Second lie, two people have just come from the band of the prophets and, you know, give them some gifts. Can can we have one talent of silver and two items of clothing? The man said, take two. So it took two, it was helped to move them. And then after some time, he took over. He went to hide them. Then he went in front of his master, Elisha. And Elisha said, where have you been? He lied again. He said, I didn't go anywhere. Elisha said, didn't you know my spirit went with you? Is this the time to take and receive presents? You will, the, the leprosy that left Naaman 
will come on you and your descendants. Let us just consider those two. They used about the same words. One of them said God, Elijah, as long as the Lord whom I serve lives, I will not take anything from you. That was what God said. And then Gehazi said, as long as the Lord lives. He didn't say whom he served. Fake. One was real, blessing. Of course, the blessings of and through Elisha continued. Gehazi got leprosy. Naaman said, he wanted one. The Naaman said, take two. He took two. And he took leprosy. Not only on himself, but on his family. We have different things happening that you know about. Just a few days ago, we had a crossover service. And someone sent a picture to me, um, a video of how they did crossover service. A pastor put out his leg on the chair, and people lined up to go through. Crossover. Crossover. I looked at it. What is this? Crossover through your leg. The pastor is living. He has a lifespan. God that enables you to cross over lives forever. And you are passing through his leg. No wonder, like I said, the work of the Holy Spirit has continued to come under attack. Individuals and churches ignore the work of the Holy Spirit. This results in absence of life giving personal fellowship with God. You know, it, it, people don't no longer have personal fellowship. Imagine that guy they called uh, Daniel, who went in as a slave, but he wasn't. He, was, he, he lived as a king, actually. Four kings, he was the one ruling. When they didn't know where to go to, what to do, when they dreamt and they couldn't interpret, they came to to Daniel. So who was who was ruling? It was Daniel really? Three times a day. He had time with his God. He went to pray. They said it was his custom. They looked for things against him, jealous people. He did not look for them. He was just doing well. When you are doing well at times, you come under attack. Eh? They looked for things. They said, no, only with things about his God. And they said, don't ask anything from anybody. And then they, they caught him praying. Well, he's been praying for a long time. At times when you pray, some people say, oh, um, I'm, you know, I'm tired. We'll just go to pray. No, <laughs> the day you will need the prayers, it will be awesome. What happened? They took Daniel, threw him in the den of lions. The lions left him alone. They didn't touch him. God said, this is not food. There are many things we see when we see Daniel in heaven. Well, last, how did you feel? There are lions all over. Lions here, lions there. And then the people that accused him that they threw in the same place may have thought, well, they brought Daniel out. Nothing happened to him. Um, if, you know, we are, we are many anyway. These lions won't be able to eat us. Suddenly, the lions had extra appetite. They caught them in the air and devoured them. It is good to stay in line with God. We are coming there shortly. Some people complain, they, say they are going through the motions. That phrase rises me now. The Lord God Almighty, His Spirit is in you. You say you are going through the motions. You have a problem. You have a big problem. The living God, the one who does it, who was, who is, and who is to come. His spirit is supposed to be in you, and you are saying, I'm going through the motions. You see, you are the one ignoring him. You are looking at Goliath's mountains. You are seeing things. Some people see things that are not there, although some people see things that are there. 
one, one famous musician was on the corridor. He started looking. He stopped at the long corridor. He was looking out. He said he, said he stood there for about an hour. And someone said, what are you looking at? He said, look at this beautiful picture. He was admiring the picture. And the person said, there's nothing there. He was just seeing things because he was affected by drugs. He started seeing things that were not there. Admiring drawings that are not there. Plain wall, you see drawings. These are things. People want to get power. They want extra power. Do things, take drugs. Some people are defeated by sinful habits. And some people, they say they believe in the Lord. They accommodate evil habits. These things will come out. You know, there's a place they say another one bites the dust. No, your testimony should be you are sweeping away the dust for yourself and for others in Jesus' name. But come and bite the dust. Jesus did not die and rise again and that gave you his Holy Spirit for you to be biting the dust. So when there are things, the, the attack, if people begin to you know, accommodate evil, when you examine yourself and you see that what, what you are doing is not right, ask God to deliver you. Remember how Jacob did it? Jacob said, except you bless me, I won't let you go. He was blessed. He held on to the angel. If you kill me, then I accept you bless me. He was asking for blessing. We thank the Lord. You can we hear of big mega churches who never mention repentance and sin. Jesus, because they said if they mention repentance and sin, people won't come. They said, you are okay the way you are. You are cool. And I tell you, in most meetings, we are uplifted when there's worship. Okay? Then people go back to doing what they are doing. Evil. So when they, they feel that is the thing, no, he has come to transform you and transform me. If you remove sin and repentance from the gospel, what is left? Jesus came to destroy the power of sin. Repentance is a gift for you to turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. So if you don't talk about repentance, how can the people be saved? How can they be transformed? These are the things, ways of attacks. Some people actually misrepresent the work of the Holy Spirit. They tell you, I'm going to Canada, I'm going to one part of the US, there's revival there, I want to go and catch you know, catch the thing and bring. What are you catching? How many people can travel to Canada? The Lord says, believe in me, repent of your sins, I will come. I will put my spirit within you. If you have to travel somewhere, and then they come back, they focus on manifestations. But I tell you, manifestations that don't lead to transformed lives are dodgy. If I begin to jump up and jump up and jump up and fall over, and jump up and fall over, and there's no difference. Well, where I grew up, let me tell you, you don't need to do much. You just wait. Uh, usually in the evenings, some fetish people, they begin to dance. Things possess them. They jump all over. They can jump for hours. They, I think they must go, go to the hospital after. They hit things. They get up. They wear white and red. They jump. You say, how does this person have this power? That's manifestation. If there's no, the Holy Spirit transforms, that's why it's the living spirit. Praise the Lord. And also we have reports of people faking miracles, paying for people to sit and say, you know, let God be God. There's a reason why some miracles don't happen. Maybe they wait a little bit, wait for the Lord, and then pray. The transformation takes place. The Lord knows. Some happen, you don't even ask. Some you pray, they happen. Some you pray, you have to wait. Don't force it. Don't fake it. He is the Lord. He is the Holy Spirit. He did not go with Gehazi. Elisha 
had anointing, double portion. Gehazi had leprosy for himself and his line. No, go for the true anointing, the living spirit. Praise the Lord. Like I said on the 31st, we heard some testimonies, which much more not said, but all glory to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, talking to his disciples and the crowd, said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Later on, he says, some people will say, didn't I perform miracle in your name? Didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I pray for people and they were healed? Say, go, I never knew you. So the question is, how can you know? How can you be assured that you will be told and I I knew you welcome? If these people perform miracles and the Lord is saying, I never knew you. So what's the difference? The difference is that you are truly born again. You have the Lord in you. And you have the Holy Spirit now speaking to you. Now, it's not a one-off. They prayed for me in 1970. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, you keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-off event. Like we'll soon read, Jesus said, if you obey me, I will Send, you know, you will, if, you, if, you be, if, if you love me, you will obey me. And I will ask the Father, he will give you another counselor. That meant Jesus himself was their counselor then. Okay, we'll soon read it. The counselor will be in you and will be with you. The world will not know him because the, Lord, the world doesn't receive him. The, the, the world doesn't know the difference. But you know him because he will be with you and in you. We're talking of the living spirit in you. Where is the location of the Holy Spirit? In me, in you. So that then we expect transformation. When we see things, what does a counselor do? What is the work of a counselor? Say, Jesus said, I would pray. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father. He will give you another counselor who will be with you forever. He will be in you and with you. Okay, no more counselors that we have. What is the job of a normal counselor? They work with people with a wide range of emotional and psychological problems to help bring about effective change. They do a good job, not so. But we are talking of the Lord. They are, they are human beings. These people, they, normal counselors, they, they don't do 24 7. You, you go to, in fact, when you go, you see them by, per hour and you pay a lot of money. After which they go home and you go home. But the one the Lord is promising, His own spirit said, will be in you and with you. So you can see that we will pray that God will help us. Listen to him, not talk over him, not your will. See, this is what I've decided to do. Well, that was what Gehazi decided to do. But what Elisha decided to do was what the Lord said. You see, the dangers of, of what I decided to do, this is my will. What is God's will? He's supposed to live in you. Even, you know, The Lord is leading us to focus on this so that we truly understand who the Holy Spirit is and to submit properly to him. That's what this course is about. Living by the Spirit. Even in the Old Testament, people that lived as children of God submitted to the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example. You know the example of Joseph. Joseph, his brothers, very quickly, his brothers uh, wanted to kill him. They finally sold him. And then he went into, uh, he was bought by Potiphar. God blessed the house of Potiphar. 
and what Potiphar was doing outside his house because of Joseph. It soon became clear why. When Potiphar's wife decided to go for uh, Joseph, come and sleep with me, she said. Joseph refused. The Bible says it continued. It wasn't a one-off. Continued asking. He said, no. He said, how can I sin? Not against his master, against the Lord. How can I sin? He had an audience of one. Some people will say, look at your brothers don't like you. Bad things are happening to you. See, the master's wife is asking for, no, it's not the master. It's not my brothers. It's not, it's not the, this woman. It's the Lord I'm accountable. I cannot sin against the Lord. Then he was framed, he ended up in jail. Even then, God was with him. The extent to which God will go to, to be with people who are with him, who are surrendered to him. God went to jail to meet and bless Joseph. And then he interpreted two dreams. They came to pass. He said to one of them, don't forget me. That one forgot him for two years. Then the Lord made Pharaoh have a dream, two dreams in a night. He was worried. He got everybody in his world, okay, in Egypt and all around, to interpret and tell him the meaning. They could not. Then that man, the chief butler, remembered. He said, oh, when I was in prison, somebody interpreted, get him. And then Joseph came. He interpreted the dream. He said, the the two were the same. He interpreted it. It will be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. Oh, king, oh, Pharaoh, I advise you get somebody who will be able to manage the system so that in the years of plenty, they will be able to sort it out so that it uh, keeps some. And in the years of famine, you have, you know, they will still have food. What did the king say? say? What does Pharaoh say? Genesis 41, 37. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there's no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Praise the Lord. I don't want to digress. You can imagine when there was state function after that. What do you think Potiphar's wife will do? She will say she has headache in her tummy. She's not going. Because she accused the man wrongly, and the man is now in charge. Joseph is now in charge. Oh, the husband will say, let us know. My leg is pinning me. He would do everything. My stomach, my head. But Joseph didn't go that way. His focus was on God. Praise the Lord. Even Pharaoh recognized that he, the, the spirit of God was on Joseph. You know the rest of the story. In Exodus 31, 2-5, to the Lord who had been leading the children of Israel, told Moses, he said, see, I have chosen Bezaliel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. If you read further, you see that God also gave people to to assist him. There was some other, so that there will be no jostling. Go to God. God has a plan for you. Though if you go outside what God says, it's dangerous. I, I won't even say you should go and ask Gehazi. 
If you don't go, don't go, just answer. Just, you can see the lingo. Use the same lingo. As long as the Lord lives. Huh? Is that what uh, the catch word that my master used? Okay, I, I will go after this one. He got not only for himself, his generations after his line. God called, chose Bezaliel and put his spirit within him. There are times of waiting. The dream of Pharaoh had to come at that time. Joseph had to be prepared. He went through a school. He went through a school. We don't have time to talk about Daniel. But in the New Testament, Jesus made it clear that those who believe in him will be filled with the life-giving spirit. John 7, 37 to 39. On the last day, and on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. It is when you come, when he says, come and drink, if you thirst, you have to desire. It's not a part-time thing. Christianity is all, is all in. You don't put one leg in and one leg out. Like I said, it can be very dangerous can be very dangerous, but you don't get the full benefit. We call him the Spirit of God. He is the one that is living in us. We are the vessel. We are the vessel. And we have to make ourselves clean, away with things, put to death things that are not right. As he brings them up, you put them aside. Cast them aside. If not... People might become pastors, heads of organizations, general overseers, and yet they carry sin. Big worship leaders, members of congregations, and there are still things there. When he says, arise and shine, for your light has come, it's because the spirit of the living God dwells within you. That's why I will arise in his power, his grace. I will ask him. When I'm awake, I will ask, when I'm asleep, it's supposed to be a constant thing because his, his domicile is in you now. He lives in you and will be with you. Praise the Lord. No one can have the life that God has promised without knowing and submitting to the Holy Spirit. People will try and people have different shades. You know, oh, this is how we do things that God hears. It's God. The, you know, I can do whatever I want. They are okay in church. How, how men, how women wish their husbands would be okay the way they are in church, that would be okay at home. How men, too, wish their wives would be the same. But we can all be the same. We can ask the Lord to continue to walk in us. To work in us. Because we have a lifespan. He doesn't have a lifespan. He is a holy God. And he wants to bless. And Jesus said, those who believe in him, will receive out of them, we flow rivers of living water. Living water, they make glad. They, they give life. They affect others. They make disciples. They pray. They live for Jesus. They are a light that shines. Nobody can quench them. Praise the Lord. So, as I begin to round up, what should we do to have the Holy Spirit, the living Spirit in us? The first thing, be in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, enter through the narrow gates. See, when you, when you are in Christ, you don't only choose a different direction. You choose a different master. 
You choose a different master. You cannot serve God and mammon. No, no. You choose a different master. It's not just a way of life. Okay, I do it a bit. I take time off. I go hold. No, no. It's, it's, you, you choose a different master. The Lord is not your master. Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. Only a few find it. Do you want to find it? Do you want to find it? Jesus says you can find it. Just say, Lord, I want you in my life. Come, you died. I celebrated a short while ago of your birth. Lord, we keep hearing, but I come to you again. Please, remove my heart of stone. Give me a heart of flesh. Make me the person you want me to be. Transform me. Forgive me my sins. This is where repentance comes in. It's a gift. Once you are alive, you can repent. But don't make a habit of going to sin and coming to repent. Even you yourself, you'll be a yo-yo. You're not sure of where you're going. So repent. Turn away. Turn away. And attitudes that you have picked up could bring them before the Lord. Say, Lord, remove them from me. This is not right. This is who... My expression now, I affect my family, I affect my friends, but it's not right. Lord, help me to get rid of this. It's a con- con- once you are alive, you have to be doing that. There's no, oh, there's somebody up here talking down at you. No, everyone, whatever the Lord flags up. When something comes to your mind, see, we have a battle of my will, your heart, what you want. The devil we can easily spot. At times we cooperate with the devil. But we have the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit says, that thing is not good, throw your hands up. Say, Lord, please forgive me. Oh, that person is looking at me somehow. That person is so good. I find it difficult to pray for the person. Instead of encouraging evil desires, what, what does she think she is? It comes from jealousy to what does she, who does she think she is? Look at her. It grows. Kill that. But once we're in this world, we have different things. It comes in different shades. And the Lord will transform you. He will forgive you. At the end of this meeting, we will pray. If you don't have, if you never ask Jesus into your life to forgive you your sins, okay? He did it for me in 1969, 22nd of August. I asked the Lord. My father was a pastor. I went to church. I was in the choir. I wasn't a Christian. Did I sing the song? So, yes. I had a uniform. The choir master could not tell me not to join. Don't know what I was singing, but I was there. Until a man of God preached and said, each of us will give account of ourselves to God. It's not a game. It's not a game. It's a transformation. It came to transform us. I want to hear welcome. I don't want to hear, I never knew you. Oh, no. I want to hear welcome. If you want to hear welcome, ask the Lord. The joy of it is that you can pray. You can pray and then just come and have a chat so that we pray with you and continue to encourage you. But you have to have Jesus as your Savior. Apostle Paul puts it this way in Romans 8, 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Yes, see the benefit. There's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who wants to enjoy condemnation? Move away from condemnation side to the side of freedom. And only Jesus, only Jesus provides that. Praise the Lord. The second point is keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Keep in step with the Holy Spirit. 
we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not there, not in church. It's supposed to be with you and in you. God has blessed us with his word. So we read his word. We obey his word. We study. There's reading, there's study. You, you know, they, we study, we take in. We, 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 we meditate on the word of God so that we'll be transformed. We'll be blessed. We, the Lord will speak to us. He will encourage us. He will correct us. He will transform us. Like I said, we all, we keep going through transformation. If you get out of the zone of transformation, you are dead. That is why when you are alive, the Lord keeps working in you and you submit to that. Praise the Lord. We've, said, we've read it before. Just say, if you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the Lord. I will ask the Father to give you another comforter and it will be with you and in you. Praise the Lord. Peter said, for it is God who works in us to will and to do his good will. After Paul, the apostle. It is God, that's the Holy Spirit, who works in us to will. If you don't relate to him, how will you listen to him? How will you know it's him? The Holy Spirit works in you to will and to do. To will and to do his good purpose. That's why we have to listen to him. If you are here thinking, how can I hear him? Ask the Lord, Lord, I can't hear you. Speak to me. You see the Lord will speak to you. He will direct you. He will direct you. Keep in step. Don't take holidays, long holiday, short holiday from the Lord. Keep in step with the Lord. He wants to bless you. It's the spirit of truth. So you cannot have the spirit of truth and be lying and be living a life that is not straight. You know, it doesn't work. Be in Christ through the Holy Spirit, keep in step with the Holy Spirit. There was a man, you know, you know the story, Samson was blessed, anointed, not so. He said, don't do so. He did not keep in step. They kept the secret of his power. And then when the enemy came, he did as if it was, oh, enemy has come. Power was gone. Power was gone. Keep in step. Samson did not keep in step. Once he had power. Second time he had power. Third time he had power. Then he gave what this, the Lord said he shouldn't do. He did. He told them. They thought he had power. There was no power. Keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 12 to 14 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Put to death. Put to death. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So there are things to put, to kill. When you are born again, you don't, don't, don't become, no. There are things to kill. Put them to death. Galatians 5.16 says, So if I live, so, so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So I say, live by the Spirit, you will not gratify, you will not please, you will not give pleasure to, you will not gladden, you will not indulge. Are there secret things you are indulging in? This course is Living by the Spirit. You find it in our summary booklet, session one, page one. Let us pray. If your prayer is to ask the Lord to come into your life and be your savior, all in, to forgive you your sins, please don't make a sound. Just ask the Lord. Speak to him inside you. 
But be serious. We have the Spirit of God that sees all things. If you want to say after me, Lord Jesus, say, you can say it silently, but say it. Today, the 7th of January, 2024. It's always good to know the day you ask Jesus to come into your life or the day you rededicate your life is always vital because you will ask yourself. The devil will ask you. It will, it will show you, it will tell you, oh, you are not a Christian. You will say, on that day, I prayed. Gee, I asked Jesus to come, and I'm following him. So, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Thank you for coming and dying for my sins. I believe in you, Lord. Help my unbelief. I turn away from my sins. Remove sin from me, Lord. I want to delight in you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for your word. Thank you for other brothers and sisters that are growing, that are being transformed. Oh Lord, thank you for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. For those who want to be prayed for, to be filled again, refreshed, to be enlightened, to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, who are just, who want to highlight and say, Lord, you now, you are in me. I ask you to come and fill me. I will listen to you. I will listen to you. Right, let us pray. If you have believed in the Lord, first of all, you begin to ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. It's his promise. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And if you are a Christian, you've never been Baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come at the end of the meeting, I will be here. I will pray for you. The only things you need that you come with is yourself, that you now have asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior. You want to follow him. I will lay my hands on you and pray that you be filled with the Holy Spirit. For the rest of us who want to be filled again, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that because you've chosen to live with us and in us, if we believe in you and obey what you command, Lord Jesus, we want to obey what you command. Fill us again with your Holy Spirit the, and the Counselor, Lord, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, your Spirit. Fill us again and again and again. We thank you. You've called us this morning in worship, in prayer, Lord, in your word, that we should keep in step with you. Lord, we pray that even inside us, our thoughts, we we'll say, Lord, what do you say? What is your way? What is your direction? Because your ways are always perfect. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The final prayer, I want to pray for anybody who's ill. You can stand up or you can stand up on behalf of anybody who is ill. Father Lord, we thank you. We bless you for your power, your grace to save, to heal, and to deliver. We ask you, Lord, many of us, Either we are ill or we know those who are ill. We ask for your healing grace to come upon them in Jesus' name. Whatever the name of the illness, whether it's outside our bodies or inside our bodies, whether it's fear, 
or trepidation. In the name of Jesus, I command these illnesses to go in Jesus' name. I declare the obvious that these people have the Holy Spirit living in them. So the living God. So you get out of them and get out of their business in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Take alone all the glory. All the glory alone belongs to you. We thank you and continue to honor you. Father, thank you. We pray that, Lord, those of us that have been prayed for, we pray for others. It is for everyone who is a child of God to express, to arise and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.